Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU spending cuts to hit Portugal's poor European Union's policy towards Belarus Crow's control of mobile market dazzles citizens with shiny trinkets European Union eyes more academic exchanges from 2014 plus European Court overturns decision to scrap pay rises for EU officials. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. Spending cuts to European Union food aid programmes could leave Portugal's growing ranks of poor with even emptier plates. Western Europe's poorest country is likely to lose 40% of €20 million Euros in food aid it gets from Brussels every year, according to Isabel Jonet, who heads the food bank's charity. Her institution supports 390,000 poor people out of Portugal's 10.5 million population. They have been helped by the EU's Food for the Needy programme, but it is due to be replaced by the Fund for European Aid. The new fund will have fewer resources for food and the cash strapped government has made no preparations to deal with the problem. More on this topic later in the show. This latest report in our legislation section notes that the advantageous situation of Lithuania's presidency along with Eastern Partnership Summit in Vilnius is recognised as a chance for the EU to improve its relations with Belarus. Furthermore, it is suggested that the EU make best use of temporary and conditional suspension of the incumbent foreign minister from the EU visa ban list with a view to broadening essential diplomatic communication channels with Belarus. However, the EU must remain steadfast on the visa ban and assets freeze targeting those directly involved in violating democratic election standards and human rights. Once again, there is political leverage at work. And here at the unit, we are working hard in the background to find out the relationships between the European Union and the Eurasian Union. And I hope to bring you information from the Russian perspective very soon. Europe wasn't always a digital laggard. Its telecoms operators were far quicker than America's to build 3G mobile telecoms networks. Nokia once made the world's coolest mobile phones, but the old continent has fallen behind. Only a quarter of the European Union's people have access to the new 4G networks, according to the European Commission. In America, a single company, Verizon, reaches 9 out of 10. South Korea's broadband speeds leave Europe standing. Neely Crows, the commissioner overseeing Europe's digital agenda, thinks CRISPR connectivity would be a boon not just for the EU's telecoms industry and its consumers, but for the Union's entire economy. Now, the mainstream media are much heap big hype over this mobile phone harmonisation, and we've been tracking the story for several weeks. But why does the EU think this is such big news? Well, one of our subscribers, XL162, has some thoughts. This is all just beads to placate the natives, a well-known socialist ploy. Screw the proletariat with tax hikes and mass unemployment, but assume people are sufficiently dim to be bought off with a handful of shiny beads in the guise of mobile phone charges. Exactly the same game as Miller Dim is proposing re-energy bills. Well... Thanks to Excel for those comments. It's great to get your comments and articles, so please do keep them coming. Whilst on the topic of interacting, don't forget, you can get involved in our new live show, Critical Thinking, which begins on Wednesday the 2nd of October at 2pm. And check out the links below to Google Plus for more details. Deputy Head of the European Union Delegation to India, Pavel Zvitil, on Friday expressed hope that the launch of the Erasmus for All initiative in 2014 will increase opportunities for academic exchanges between India and Europe. He hoped more students from the city would participate in the programme. 
The new programme, Erasmus for All, has opened new horizons for students. The conditions for participating in the programme are changing. I am here to get feedback on how we can change the programme, said Svitil. He said that the EU had decided that higher education will be one of the priorities in its foreign aid spending, which has so far been focused on primary education and health. The highest EU court has overturned a decision by member states to scrap pay rises for union officials because of the absence of exceptional economic circumstances. The European Court of Justice said in a non-binding legal opinion that it will increase EU workers' wages by 1.7% despite the ongoing financial crisis. The document, which was published yesterday, suggests that the ECJ has sided with the European Commission in its decision to annul the Council of Ministers' rejection of the pay hike. (laughs) What the? (laughs) Wow! When I read this story, well, frankly, I, I almost fell off my chair. The court overturned it in the absence of exceptional circumstances? You're kidding me! This is from the institution that's not been able to get its own books signed off by the auditors in the last 17 years. Le Banque de Crisis Dramatique, which raided Cypriot bank accounts, ousted Greek and Italian Prime Ministers, has almost 20% of the Portuguese people jobless and hungry, and over 60% youth unemployment in Greece. You moronic bunch of banks to bureaucrats, get off your shiny backsides and out into the real world and open your eyes! Today in our video library, putting some further meat on the bone with regard to our Portugal story, I recall this video from Bloomberg of a year ago, which predicted further job losses and increasing dependence on charities such as food banks as the EU austerity cuts social security and increases taxes. Now imagine this. In the video it shows that unemployment increased from 7.6% to 10.9%. However, friends, that is nothing, as those figures are from a year ago. Unemployment figures for August 2013 are a staggering 17.7%. And of course, the EU troika are mandating even more austerity and further cuts. No prizes for guessing what the resulting outcome of that policy will be. But let's go back further. Around 12 years ago, I went on holiday to Portugal, and in conversation with some of the people there, they explained how many of them were already unhappy with the integration of the euro, because the transition had seen price increases, and in certain cases, prices doubled overnight. The introduction of the euro was a massive revaluation of the currency for Portugal. And how was it paid for? With debt. As you can see, the timeline and perspective from which you look at a problem can create the perception of a completely different story. In the video, you see the Portuguese public official who talks about unemployment being the reason for the economic difficulties. Choosing the time frame in which we examine the facts and the words we use to describe it, well, friends, that's called politics. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.